What is your uh, position on the plan of the International Criminal Court to investigate uh, former President Rodrigo Duterte over his uh, war on drugs? I urge my Kayo Filipino to rally behind and support the new leaders uh, who want the next administration uh, successful. Ang ayaw ko, baka may maiwan pa yung namumuliti ka pa rin. No? What is your uh, position on the plan of the International Criminal Court to investigate uh, former President Rodrigo Duterte over his uh, war on drugs? My position hasn't changed, and I have stated it uh, often, even before I, I took office as president, uh, that uh, there, have, there are many questions about their jurisdiction and the, uh, what can be what we in the Philippines uh, regard as an intrusion into our, our internal matters and a, a, uh, uh, a threat to our sovereignty. Uh, so, no, I, I do not see what their jurisdiction is. I feel that we have in our uh, uh, police uh, and in our judiciary a good system. We do not need assistance from uh, any outside, uh, outside entity. The Philippines is a sovereign nation and we are not colonies anymore of uh, these uh, former uh, imperialists. <laughs> So that is not uh, that is not something that uh, we consider to be uh, a, uh, a legitimate uh, a legitimate judgment. So uh, until those questions of jurisdiction and the effects on the sovereignty of the republic are sufficiently answered, I cannot cooperate with them. Thank, Thank you, sir. Mr. President. Bye, Lahat, and I hope that. Uh, everybody would uh, come to terms with uh, the reality that uh, we have a new government and uh, I urge my Kayo Filipino to rally behind and support the new leaders uh, who want the next administration uh, successful. Uh, Magsalita ng tao, may mga leader tayo, and me, wala na ako. I will, I, will, I will say nothing. Ang ayaw ko, baka may maiwan pa yung namumuliti ka pa rin. Or, you know, just plain uh, uh, criticize uh, itong bagong administrasyon. Uh, you do not do that. Uh, uh, President-elect uh, Marcos would be the cooperation and help of everybody. We must give it to him. But that's, that's democracy. That is how we operate. Next question from Mr. Nestor Corrales from Philippine Daily Inquirer. Good morning, Mr. President. Hey, good morning. Sir, do you think it is now the right time to activate or to invoke the country's mutual defense treaty with the United States following the laser-pointing incident at the West Philippine Sea? Mm. And perhaps it is uh, because if we activate that, uh, what we are doing is escalating, the, uh, the uh, intensifying uh, the tensions in the area. And I think uh, that would be counterproductive. Besides, uh, despite the fact that uh, it was a military-grade laser that was pointed at our Coast Guard, I do not think that it is sufficient uh, for us to for for it to trigger the uh, mutual defense treaty. So uh, we are in constant contact, of course, with our treaty partners, not only with the United States, but also our ASEAN partners and our partners here in Asia. And uh, that I think is the better recourse rather than to go directly to the uh, mutual defense treaty, which again uh, I am very concerned would provoke the uh, the tensions rather than uh, cool the tensions down. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Ms. Bea Corpin from Rappler. Hi, Hello. sir. Good morning. Good morning. Sir, what prompted you, on, on China again, sir, what prompted you to summon the ambassador? Siyempre, malaking deal din yun, sir, to summon him. And uh, how did the discussion go? What was discussed? Well, I, what was discussed, and I said uh, that the laser pointing incident was, a, uh, was only 
a part of what uh, we are seeing as a intensifying or a escalating of uh, the uh, uh, actions of the militia of China, the uh, marine militia of China, the Coast Guard of China, and the Navy of China. And I uh, actually, I said we have we we have to find a way around this because if we are such close friends, such as China and the Philippines, these are not the kind of incidents that we should be talking about between the president and the ambassador uh, to uh, to the Philippines from China. And I reminded him that this was not what we agreed upon with President Xi uh, when I visited him in Beijing. So we are hoping that uh, we can. Uh, we can find a better way rather than these uh, incursions into our maritime territory and the rather aggressive acts that we have been seeing in the past few weeks and months. At a time when China is increasing its presence in the South and East China Seas, NHK asked Marcos how he plans to navigate the resulting security and diplomatic challenges. We have observed many movements by uh, the uh, different powers. China, of course, has, has uh, made its presence very strongly felt uh, to the Philippines. And uh, again, uh, my, my, uh, my uh, view on the subject is that we are defending our territory against claims being made against our territory. And so we, uh, as a, a sovereign nation, have to do everything that we can to defend it. Uh, now, I do not think that the, the solution is a military one. And uh, so we must continue to engage all parties involved. We must continue to counsel uh, everyone who is involved in, 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 uh, in the South China Sea uh, to, uh, uh, for restraint and to try to to resolve whatever issues there are in a peaceful way. Uh, and that, I think, is the uh, fundamental, the fundamental uh, aspiration for the Philippines, is that we maintain the peace and we dial down the increasing tensions in the region. I suggested to him that some of the incidents that we see are happening in South China Sea seem to be indicative of a failure of communication. Oh. And so I said, let us improve our communication. We already have a task force uh, that is a bilateral task force with China and the Philippines that are supposed to uh, uh, um, talk about and uh, uh, try to resolve some of these, uh, some of these incidents that, uh, that we uh, see happening in South China Sea. And uh, that's the, but uh, my, my suggestion and my proposal to the president, President Xi, was that we raised the level of uh, that, uh, uh, that bilateral task force. How was the response from uh, President Xi? He was, very, uh, he, he was very open to the idea. What's your view on uh, Taiwan contingency? We do consider ourselves very much on the front line. If there is conflict, if there is uh, 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 any kind of incident in the Taiwan Straits, uh, then it will affect the Philippines immediately. If there is conflict uh, and an outright, uh, uh, outright uh, force being used or there is actual fighting going on, it seems impossible to me that the Philippines will not be involved in one way or another. We will certainly not go to war with anyone, but uh, we will somehow, because of our physical proximity, to uh, whatever could be happening, because just because, simply because of that, uh, we see that the Philippines has to take measures to protect itself. Like Japan, we have uh, one side China, mm -hmm. we have one side United States, yes. and uh, defending our sovereignty. Mm -hmm. What's your philosophy? Well, uh, you see, this is what we are trying to avoid. Uh, the uh, the calculus that we used to use during the Cold War, mm. when you have to choose mm. between one, the Soviet Union mm. or the United States. And there were very well-defined so-called spheres of influence. Uh, and this, I do not think that this is relevant anymore in 2023. And so we, as I have uh, often uh, repeated, that the, the Philippines has pursued an independent foreign policy. 
and it is not guided by uh, any other uh, any other country, but guided by the national interest, what is best for the Philippines, what is best for our citizens, what is best for